section 13.4, we're going to talk about something called tessellations. So a tessellation of a plane is a way to fill up the plane with copies of congruent figures so that there are no overlaps and no gaps. Now, some of you, when you were playing with pattern blocks, filled up something like this. They weren't congruent figures, all of them, okay? But you were somehow trying to fill things in. That's the idea of tessellation. No gaps, no overlaps. A tessellation done with regular polygons is called a regular tessellation. And the ones that you guys were doing on the floor, many of those shapes were regular. What was one of the shapes that you had that was a regular shape? You had a triangle, not isosceles. Well, yeah, equilateral triangle. What else did you have that was a regular shape? You had a hexagon, right? You had a regular hexagon in there. You also had squares, okay? So those would all have been, if you used just that one shape, like just the hexagons and used only hexagons, that would be a regular tessellation. If you just used squares, which is actually the picture right here, right, that would be a regular tessellation. Unfortunately, not all regular polygons will tessellate in the plane. The ones that we dealt with, with the patterned blocks up here, did do that. But since the sum of the angles at each vertex must be 360 degrees, the number of the angles at the vertex must be 360 divided by the angle measure. And that's why I was asking you to look at angle measures when you were up here. Some of the angle measures you got, somebody tell me one of the angle measures you saw in these shapes up here. 60. 60. 90. 90. 30. 120. 120. I don't think we had a 150. Oh, okay, yeah, but it wasn't one of the regular shapes, right? Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so the other ones that you dealt with, though, all of those would divide 360 evenly, wouldn't it? Yeah, they would. And so if you take those angle measures, 360, and divide it by the angle measures that you guys gave me, you would get a whole number. So angle measures for these polygons must evenly divide 360. There are only three that work, 60, 90, and 120. 30 works. The problem with the number 30 is that what happens if you take 360 divided by 30? What do you get? 360 divided by 30. 12, 20, what are we saying? 360 divided by 30. Why am I not? 12? Okay. So if you had a 12-sided shape, we would have problems. We wouldn't be able to get the angles that we need. There's only three shapes that have these three, that is 60, 90, and 120, that work. The 30 that we were dealing with wasn't coming from a regular polygon, if you'll remember. That's, that's why it was working up here, so it wasn't regular. All right, so what shape has angles of 60 degrees? A triangle, and these are all the regular ones, so if you want to write equilateral triangle, be my guest. What about the second one? Square. Yeah, 90 degrees is my square. And the 120, where did that come from? Hexagon. That was my regular hexagon, you bet. So these are the only three regular shapes that will be used to regularly tessellate a plane. And there's other ways to get shapes that will tessellate planes as well. So let's talk about those next. If you're tessellating with non-regular polygons, so this picture in black right up here is a non-regular polygon. Agreed? It's quadrilateral, all the angles, all the sides, none of that's regular. So what can you do? Well, if you actually cut each of the side lengths in half, okay, the midpoint of each of the side lengths, and you do a half turn around that side length, and you do it again and again, it will tessellate. So this is an image of exactly what's happened here. So if you take this point P, the halfway point between um, your A and B are right here, and you rotate this thing a half turn around this point, it will come over here. You guys with me? And you can keep doing that. You can take this halfway point here and rotate it, and it would become the lower value, or the lower uh, quadrilateral here. Take the halfway point here and tessellate, or take this point here and tessellate, and you get the other one. So you can do it with other non-regular polygons as well by using the, the midpoint of the side lengths to tessellate, or to rotate, to do the tessellation. Okay. The other thing you can do is you can take a regular shape and you can manipulate it. So this is a tessellation using a square. 
So do you see how along the top of the square there's been some sort of a image cut out? It's actually even been added in some pieces. So you can see like this part of it's a cutout right here, but this part of it's sort of an add-on right here, right? We've taken some sort of an image and we've put it on the top of the square instead of the image that was there by cutting it out or by adding it on. And if you reflect that same image or translate that same image down to the opposite side of the square and use it there, then the same image can be used to tessellate in the plane. It's no longer a square, but it's built upon a square uh, pattern, right? So you can, and you could do that not only to the top and the bottom of the square, you could do it to the sides of the square too, right? So you could have very interesting looking shapes coming about because you've manipulated the sides of the square as long as you do it to the opposite, both sides, right? Opposite sides of the square, left and right or top and bottom. The other thing that you can do is you can take a triangle, okay? With a triangle, you can only do half of the side length and manipulate it. So you can see over here, we've done the top half sort of of this triangle from O to B. And then you rotate that manipulation. It's not a shift. It's not a reflection, kind of like it was in the other one, not, not a reflection. It's not a shift or a translation. This one's a rotation. So you rotate it about, about the point O. So this one looks like it's a cut out of the image, and this looks like it's an add-on of the image, right? And you get something that looks sort of like what? I mean, what do you think this probably looks like over here? Mountain cliffs, or something like that, right? You can change this image so that it actually looks like something else. Okay? And you can do that to all three sides of the triangle. You don't have to do it just one side. You can do it to three sides of the triangle for some more interesting images. All right, last slide. I told you we were going to get through. Your book also details how to make even more intricate tessellations. Think mathematical art in your classroom. You guys have seen some of the mathematical art in my office, right? Mathematical, you know? Oh, come visit me, Skylar. I have mathematical art in my office. Um, M.C. Escher um, was very um, prolific at mathematical art, and he used tessellations for some of these. So you can see on this one, what images do you see in the shapes that you're seeing on his particular image here? What, what do you see? Birds? Fish? Usually what people see, birds or fish. Any idea what this is based on? Square. Is it a square? A rec can't be a rectangle. It's got to be a regular shape, right? That we start with a regular shape and manipulate. A triangle. I think it's a triangle. I think this one is based on a triangle. Um, so if you look at something that's a cut out, you should see another piece that looks like it's a cut in of this. I can't remember how. So like this piece. Um, some of his work, like if you were wanting to use work in your classroom that belonged to him, like if you searched online, is really dark. Like it's almost kind of scary looking. This one's obviously not. It's birds and fish, but some of his work is. <laughs>